This is Taking Stock on Bloomberg. I'm Pim Fox. The cost of insuring bonds of Irish banks soaring yet again today amid concerns that the company will not be able to cough up the bailout money in order to prevent a financial collapse. So we've assembled a Taking Stock think tank to take a look at the roots of the problem and maybe have some suggestions as to solutions trying to prevent a meltdown that could spread to other vulnerable world markets. We have Jonathan Lemko. He analyzes sovereign debt for Vanguard. Charlie Gushy is the managing director of Auerbach Grayson. And David Lynch, senior writer for Bloomberg News. His new book, When the Luck of the Irish Ran Out, chronicles Ireland's move from rags to riches and looks at whether they could be headed back to the poorhouse once again. Uh, gentlemen, welcome. And uh, David Lynch, let me begin by uh, going to you, if you can, to give us a little bit of context context because in your book one of the phrases that stands out is that Ireland tried to have tax rates that were similar to Texas along with a social net that looked a lot like Sweden. Give us a little bit of the background of how we got to this perilous state. Sure. Well, we're, today's problems really cap an extraordinary quarter century of boom and bust for Ireland. And the first half of that period coming out of the very troubled 1980s into the 1990s was a genuine export-led boom uh, that eventually earned the name the Celtic Tiger. And that brought Ireland to probably its, its best, highest point in, it, in modern history. But then things went badly off the rail. Uh, weak regulation, uh, poor incentives in the tax system and in uh, uh, property taxes in particular, property incentives, uh, coupled with easy money and reckless banks, uh, led Ireland to the, the very difficult position it finds itself in today. Jonathan Lemko, I mean, is it possible that the problems that Ireland is facing are unique to Ireland in the way that they came about to build their prosperity? To some extent, I think that's the case, and the fact that they had such a very close relationship between the Irish sovereign on the one hand and the banks on the other, to me, that's somewhat unique. I'm also impressed by the fact that the Irish, unlike, say, the Greeks or the Portuguese, seem to try and get ahead of the problem, seem to try and reassure investors by saying, we're going to impose austerity before the others did. But you know what? This debt problem just has not gone away. It grows bigger and bigger, and that's frightening the market. Charlie Gushy, come in on this topic, because it seems as though every time we get an estimate for what the final bill will be in order to guarantee the debts of the Irish banks, and there aren't that many of them, the bill just keeps rising. Well, with, with a leveraged economy, a, a few write-offs go a long way. I mean, Ireland's not such a big country. What's interesting to me is how it's been played, not just in Ireland, but as uh, exactly parallel situation across a range of countries. So I would look at this also as, a, as we refer to it, a risk-on or risk-off situation, and we are back to risk-off. Uh, markets having played a bit of a rebound in all of these markets, they're now pulling back on all of these markets simultaneously. Jonathan Lemko, is that appropriate? I mean, as someone who looks at advising investors, is the risk off trade the one to take? For the foreseeable future, if you're a relatively conservative investor, and we are, then yeah, I think for now, let's bide our time and see how this plays out. The rhetoric lately, particularly from the French and the Germans, has been very unappealing when it comes to Ireland right now and the extent to which investors may well have to take a haircut too. That is a scary thing. So what we're advising our investors is for now at least, let's sit back and wait and see how this thing plays out. It wouldn't surprise me if CDS spreads widen out further in the short run. David Lynch, how much of this is a political problem in Ireland? Well, the interesting thing in, in the political structure, and it's really quite distinctive when measured against the typical European democracy or certainly the United States, is there isn't the left-right split that you would normally expect, where you can look at a politician and just knowing what party he's from have a fair idea of where he or she will come down on certain issues. The political divide is uh, left over as a legacy of the Irish Civil War back in the early 1920s. And as a consequence, you don't have the sort of clear offering of alternatives that you might need to get out of a crisis like this. Charlie Gushy, what are you advising clients to do if they're taking a look at investing in Ireland right now or indeed buying some Irish debt? Is it time to do that, or do you wait and find out a little bit more as we get closer to the end of the year? Well, we speak to institutional investors who can be more aggressive, and it's an aggressive trade, but uh, most people don't make a lot of money investing based on what they read this morning off of the FT. So I think the thing to do is to look for contrarian opportunities 
and stocks and uh, assets that have melted down in value and you look for opportunities to buy those based on strong risk reward arguments and you buy best of class kind of arguments. David Lynch, in your book, you talk about something called the Dahini and Nesbitt School of Economics. Explain what that is. Well, it's, it's one of my favorite pubs, and I'm, I'm not alone in saying that in, in Dublin. It's not far from government offices, the offices of the prime minister and the parliament. And in the 1980s, when Ireland was really in uh, probably the most serious uh, economic dead end before today at a time when people were beginning to think after six decades of independence that uh, independent Ireland was a failed state uh, free market economists and others journalists politicians would gather in this pub uh, and over pints of Guinness uh, maybe uh, one or two or three would debate the issues of the day and would talk about what was needed to get the country out of its funk and it worked then uh, I suspect uh, the pub is full today if the pub is full today, what are some of the solutions, David Lynch? Well, I, I think there's no cost-free way out of this, and, and that's not a tremendous insight to say that. But Ireland has dug itself collectively an enormous hole. It's going to be extremely difficult and time-consuming to get out of this. There's going to be sacrifice felt, I think, in every corner of society. And the questions are going to revolve around who bears the sacrifice? How is the pain apportioned? All right. Where does the country go from here? We're